morning, everybody. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. It's Connor here. We are back with another One Leads episode. Make sure you're liking, commenting, and subscribing. As always, you can head on over to the Patreon, everybody, for some bonus content. We've got Generation Leads going up at midday. We've also uh, got Across the Pond there as well and some Millwall analysis, so make sure you check that out. We also had the Millwall analysis posted on the members page for a little bit of a a bonus content, a piece of content, and a thank you as well for all the YouTube members. So you can sign up to that, two quid a month. Uh, all proceeds go to the support of the channel. So today, I wanted to speak about Angus Kinnear. I wanted to speak about the 49ers, and I wanted to speak about Leeds United in general and the management of the finances. This is in light of a Phil Hay article that a lot of you guys have been asking me about in general in terms of PSR, in terms of Leicester, in terms of maybe a little bit of discussion about it. So let's Let's get into it, shall we? Um, so, Leeds United are in a very healthy position when it comes to PSR. There's a limit of an 83 million quid loss that can be spread over three years when it comes to the Premier League. Leeds were well in sort of the good restraints when it came to this. A 35 million loss in the first and second season and 13 million uh, in the last. So, Leeds have done very, very well over that three-year period. Just to summarise, summarise I should say, uh, the Calvin Phillips sale and the Rafinha sale helped Leeds out massively. And Leeds had a massive problem, obviously, with the likes of Everton and others uh, when it came to breaches of uh, PSR because Leeds had to sell on massive assets when it came to Calvin Phillips, which they initially got a 42 million quid of, I should say, initially and, and up front got a 42 million value for. Now, the big conversation when it comes to PSR is, you know, getting back up to the Premier League and been able to sustain yourself in the Premier League, I think it's becoming more and more difficult because you have to sell on your assets pretty much, it feels like, if you are to finish 16th, 17th. And obviously, you are going to get the bigger club circling around a lot of your assets. Of course you are when it comes to just quality and calibre, and that's always been the case. But it does feel like with PSR regulations now to meet a certain criteria, you have to be selling on some of your best assets, which is always going to be difficult for a club like Leeds United who are trying to get back into the Premier League and sustain themselves win the, within the Premier League and grow within the Premier League because if you're having to sell your best assets on continually, it becomes a problem, um, obviously, because your team gets weaker, you get lower down in the table. So, you know, there's a lot of arguments that people say, you know, well, why don't you just keep hold of your best players? Well, I'm not really sure you can nowadays when it comes to um you know playing within the regulation so it's all about finishing higher getting a little bit more revenue and, and seeing where you are from there really but it's positive when it comes to Leeds at this moment in time the governance of the club has been excellent it has to uh, it has to be said and, and and when maybe a lot of this didn't come to fruition was when Angus Kinnear was at the club uh, under Andrea Radbrazani and Leeds worked within a certain level of restriction mentioning that word again and once again, the governance of the club was very good. And you've got to say, uh, as a chief um, operating uh, executive that Angus Kinnear is, you've got to say, well done, sir, because he's done an, a magnificent job. And maybe sort of a year or two ago when I was coming on this channel and talking about a lot of on-the-field issues, off-the-field, Angus Kinnear, when it comes to operations, has been very, very good. Leeds have not really been within any distance of breaching these financial constraints that be detrimental to a club's future and prosperity and Leeds have always worked within the restraints and they've done that very very well so uh, and with with success really when you look at Premier League campaigns when you look at what Bielsa did Leeds never really went out the way and spent big big money you know Aston Villa's probably a pretty good example when Leeds were in the same division as them they came down with massive wages and Villa had to get promoted it was a common conversation that Villa didn't get promoted that season they were in big 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 trouble whereas if Leeds didn't get promoted it wasn't a massive deal they were able to knock back bids from Tottenham and Villa for Calvin Phillips and then go again but when they went again they had to get promoted really otherwise uh, you know a Calvin Phillips sale would have been inevitable to to, to you know stay within the constraints of a, a financial regulation and um, but Leeds got promoted but once again staying in the Premier League for a year they then had to get rid of and a second year they then had to get rid of some of their prized assets to stay within um this this realm really so with Leeds getting back to the Premier League, hopefully at some point, the the accounts are, are to be released at the end of the month when it comes to that next year. But 
it looks like we're in a really, really good position. And a lot of that has been down to, you know, the sale of Luis Sinistera, which we've got 20 million quid for, the sale of Tyler Adams, obviously very recently as well, around about that figure. But also the, the wage reduction, which seems to have helped Leeds massively. There has been sizable cuts to at least 60%, according to very trusted sources like The Athletic, 60%, which is massive. Uh, Patrick Bamford has had his wage dramatically slashed, hugely slashed. And when you look at our competitor, our rival at this moment in time in terms of Le- uh, Leicester City, their main man, so-called, in Jamie Vardy, is 140 grand a week in the championship, 7.2 million quid for, th- for the year. So it's absolutely massive. And they've uh, apparently, uh, you know, over a three-year period, it, they've gone beyond the 83 million loss and they've got around about 92, 93 million loss as well, which is going to hamper them. And, and we don't know how this is going to work in terms of league structure. If they remain in the championship, the conversation with Leicester has been purely based on them being in the Premier League. But if they are to remain in the championship, there is surely going to be some financial sort of um, um, ban or, or, or sort of uh, breach put on them. And they're going to, feel some sort of tight squeeze really when it comes to that so it's massively it's it's key that Leicester do get promoted but when it comes to assets as well a lot of people I think they get a little bit confused with the likes of you know if we sell Robin Koch on if we sell Verber on if we sell Harrison on it doesn't matter you know we'll, we'll able to be able to accrue 50 million quid from from assets that we sell sell on well that's not how the losses work so what basically has happened is with Brendan Aronson, for example, Leeds bought him in on a 25 million quid deal. Um, basically, that goes down by 5 million each year. To make it really simple, sort of spreading the amortization over the length of the contract essentially makes it easier when it comes to PSR. That is why Chelsea have been handing out eight-year contracts to the likes of Enzo Fernandez. The big issue with Leeds is we've bought a lot of crap players over the last three years. <laughs> if I'm being brutally honest with you, and we all know we've bought absolute crap, but the beauty of us is even if we do stay in the championship, we have a lot of sellable assets, which helps us in the long run. So as I've just mentioned with Brendan Aronson, to adhere to PSR, basically with his contract, for example, if it's over a five-year period, in line with PSR rules, it'll go down by 5 million quid each year. So this season, for example, if we'd have started with Brendan Aronson, we'd have had to sell him for 20 million quid. Next season, we can sell him for 15 million quid. The season after, we can sell him for 10 million quid. You know, we can definitely sell him for cheaper, but we just have to take the loss when it came to PSR. So yeah, as I've said, everybody, li- listen, if Leicester have broken the rules, Leicester have broken the rules. Ultimately, they're coming back down to the championship with a quality squad. The likes of Ricardo Pereira, Vestergaard, Vout Faze, Jamie Vardy, Pat Sendaka, Kelechi and Iheanacho, Keen Dewsbury Hall. These are top top operators who would have been on a massive 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 wages in the Premier League if they've come down with these sizable assets and they're utilizing them in a lower caliber league then obviously they, they I mean they are they have a, an unfair advantage when it comes to the rule set of course so they have to get promoted this year but if they're going to be hit with a penalty next season or even next season in the Premier League or in the Championship that is fair it's, it's almost like Everton and Forest being hit with massive, massive restrictions. When this does happen, obviously it's already happened to Everton. And Manchester City, obviously it's 115 charges, but they seem to be getting more and more and more and more time to figure this out, as opposed to an Everton and Nottingham Forest. So it is different, you know, different horses for different courses, really. But Leicester, they've come down with this massive, massive advantage. And the reason they've come down with this massive, massive advantage is because they've not done the intelligent thing like Leeds United have, slash this wage structure, which has seen Patrick Bamford from one of Leeds United's highest earners on 80 grand a week to 40 grand a week. So Leeds United have managed this absolutely perfectly. And it does explain why January was such a quiet window when it came to incomings, big incomings. And we were doing the likes of getting rid of of Leo Yelda getting rid of Ian Paveda. And what this did was this helped with PSR costs. And we brought in Connor Roberts on a half season loan. It all makes complete sense. What I would like to do is say a massive thank you to Angus Kinnear. What I'd like to do is say a massive thank you to the 49ers because me as a Leeds United fan has experienced financial crippling when it comes to Peter Ridsdale and the rank running of this club for the large part of 16 years. 
But let's be brutally honest, everybody. If Leeds are to remain in the championship this season and we are to remain, you know, we will have to sell. It's not going to be a a case of, oh, Leeds can keep hold of certain players. No, we will have to sell to keep um, sort of in line with these rules and, and, and the rules are set for everybody. And if we're, made, if we're casting judgment on Leicester, it is only fair on us as well. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. Are you happy, not only with the on the pitch stuff at this moment in time, everybody, but the off the pitch stuff? I, I am so happy with what's going on at the minute. It's very complex, but I've tried to break it down as sort of briefly as I can. But guys, if you want some bonus content, head on over to the Patreon. Let me know what you think about what's going on with Leeds United at the minute, off the field and on the field. Get your score predictions in from Millwall, of course. Guys, I'll see you on the other side. Cheers. And also, make sure you check out Julian Charles link will be in the description below everybody there is a code it is he's a he's a wonderful Leeds fan called Simon uh, met me at the game and he's got a brand new company and he's setting up you can buy your furniture on there your beds all this sort of stuff and uh, you'll get a 20% off so make sure you do that everybody I'll cut I'll put the code in the section below and on the screen now make sure you do so 20% off check out SofaScore as well and I'll see you in a bit